Go ahead, Denis. Okay, thank you, Philip. So, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, so, we are going to talk about the automatic publishing system uh, today. Uh, so, first, let me introduce myself. I am Denis Hakong, and I'm the W3C webmaster, and I'm also part of the system team. Uh, so, can you guys see my screen correctly? Yeah. Yes, okay, we can. All right, so uh, I believe the slides, let me show the slide on IRC first. Uh, uh, so first, uh, what are the goals of the automatic publishing system? Uh, so the main goal of enabling the automatic publishing system in your repository is to help uh, maintain slash TR up to date. Uh, so slash tr should represent what the web should be. And uh, so it's very important uh, that this page links to the to specifications that are close to, to the editor's draft. Uh, so slide two. Uh, so in the past, uh, the only way to publish a document to slash tr was to submit a request to the webmaster and expect uh, a publication on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Not even talking about the publication moratoria uh, happening during TPAC and AC, where publications were not possible. Um, so this would create delays uh, back and forth uh, between the, the editors and the webmaster uh, to make sure the document was ready on time for the publication. Uh, so given how heavy the process was, uh, the specifications were not published uh, very often, resulting in slash TR being uh, outdated easily. So to fix that issue, we built Echidna, a system to check if uh, the documents uh, meet all the requirements and publish uh, them to slash TR without having to wait for the, uh, for the feedback from the webmaster or a specific uh, day to publish. So that system basically checks if uh, all the resources can be downloaded. Uh, the document uh, submitted passes per rules. Uh, if uh, the transition uh, was approved by the director, if it's a CR snapshot. Uh, and uh, if uh, there are no external resources, we cannot ensure uh, availability. So slide three. Uh, now the system uh, currently has some limitations and uh, you will not be able to publish a spec from first public working draft all the way to recommendation just using uh, the automatic publishing system. So in this graph, the parts in red indicate uh, the type of documents Echidna is able to process, uh, which basically are uh, working drafts, uh, candidate recommendation snapshots, and uh, candidate recommendation drafts with a couple of limitations, um, like uh, documents will be rejected if uh, it's published under a different working group than the previous version. Uh, Echidna cannot handle uh, documents with short name changes. And uh, you also cannot publish a working draft if the previous version was a CR. So these cases don't happen very often, but uh, these are some of the limitations uh, of Echidna. So next slide. Uh, so the next slide shows uh, the requirements you need to get started with uh, the automatic publishing system. Uh, first, uh, you will need your specifications to be on GitHub. Uh, which should be the case for most, if not all, groups these days. Uh, then you will need a record of the consensus in your group to publish with, uh, with Echidna. Uh, this is discussed uh, within the working group, and, but you need a record of, the, of that consensus. Uh, you will also need a token for each specification. Uh, that can be generated by your team contact or the chair of the group. 
And this token should be kept private and not shared as it will be, <clears throat> as it will be used uh, to authenticate the, the request to Echidna. And finally, uh, you will need the, <clears throat> sorry, you will need admin rights to the GitHub repository to add the token as a repository secret. Uh, we will give more details about that step uh, in the, uh, a bit later. <clears throat> uh, so slide five. Uh, so the case of CR snapshot is a bit different as the publication requires the, the director's approval and a draft announcement uh, sent to the communication team. So to get the director's approval, uh, the transition request should be raised as an issue in the repository uh, W3C transition. So that is linked uh, from the slides. Um, um, and the templates for the issues can be found in the readme. So you can simply click on the, the link in the readme and uh, you will have uh, a pre-filled uh, issue uh, that you need to complete. Uh, so when Echidna will receive a request to publish a CR snapshot, it will look for an issue with the title uh, the title of the issue ending with the specification short name. And if it finds one, it will check if the requirements are met by looking at uh, for specific comments from the director and the communication team. So there are, uh, I link two uh, example uh, at the bottom of the slide. So if you want to take a look, uh, you can check these out. So slide six, um, so this slide introduces the preferred and easiest way to configure uh, your repository for automatic TR updates. Uh, so a couple of months ago, uh, Sid Vishnoy, uh, I believe he's on the call right now. Uh, yes, uh, he's in the call. So he developed a GitHub action to automate some tasks with uh, respect and bike shed documents. So for those who don't know what GitHub actions are, it's basically a simple way to automate uh, workflows. Uh, so it can help build, uh, test, and uh, deploy uh, applications with just a YAML file. Uh, so what can SpecProd do exactly? Uh, so it can generate uh, snapshots from respec or bike shed documents. Uh, it can detect markup, uh, markup, CSS, uh, errors, or broken links. Uh, and it can uh, publish the generated snapshots to GitHub pages or to slash TR uh, via Echidna. Uh, if the document is a compound document, uh, like for example, it has images or style sheets or uh, scripts, uh, SpecProd will even download all the resources and publish them automatically. So um, the next slides focus more on what you need to do to publish to Echidna, but, uh, if, uh, but you can check spec the SpecProd repository if you have uh, specific needs, uh, for example, to publish uh, to GitHub pages. Uh, so slide seven. Uh, so the first thing you need to do uh, before even configuring the GitHub action is to add the token generated by the team contact. Uh, or the chair. Uh, the token should be added uh, to the repository as a repository secret. So um, this can be done in the settings of your repository where there's a secret uh, settings. Um, and uh, you can click on the button new repository secret uh, here. So then on the next slide, uh, from there, you can give a name to the token. Um, that name will be used in the GitHub action and copy the token value. You can see uh, these as uh, like uh, environ 
environment variables, uh, but uh, uh, GitHub will encrypt them. So if everything goes well, you should see your token listed in the in the settings, in the secret settings. Uh, so you are now, uh, so slide nine, uh, so you are not now ready to create the GitHub Action workflow. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a simple YAML file. Uh, all the GitHub Actions are located in the folder uh, .github slash workflows of the repository. So in this example, uh, we created the, the PR.push YAML um, in the, the GitHub workflows, uh, workflows uh, directory, uh, but it can be anything. Uh, the name doesn't, doesn't matter here. Um, so I will try to describe the, the YAML, uh, what it's doing. Um, so what, uh, what we are seeing here is that we want the workflow to run on any pull request and on uh, push uh, to the main branch only. Uh, we then list the jobs and uh, the actions to be used uh, in, the, in the workflow. Uh, the actions are here. Um, so here we pass two parameters to the spec prod uh, action. Uh, which are the, the token we just configured as a secret. So the way to use uh, secrets variables is you prefix the, the variable with the secrets and the name of the variable. So as you remember, you, we named the token W3C TR token, but uh, if you choose a different name, you can just update the, the YAML file. And uh, we also have the link to the working group decision uh, to use a kidna. So this is the URL to the record of uh, to the consensus. So with this workflow, SpecProd will generate a snapshot from the source document. Uh, by default, it will look for uh, index.html or index.bs uh, source document and validate uh, the document in the pull request. And uh, if it's a push on the main branch, it will also send the document to, to Echidna because we are using these, uh, these properties, these parameters. Uh, so slide 10, um, how to customize the workflow. So the slide uh, lists a couple of parameters you can use with SpecProd. Uh, so like toolchain, if you want to specify the, um, to, to help SpecProd detect the processor uh, to be used. Source, if the main file uh, of your spec is not index.html or index.bs. Validate links or validate and validate markup uh, are here just to enable or disable the validations. Uh, you can also pass some uh, processor parameter using the, 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 the parameter W3C build override. And if you want to get uh, the, if you want Akina to send you the result of the, um, of uh, the, the, the request, uh, you can specify your email address with uh, W3C notify, notifications underscore CC. So more options are described in the SpecProd repository. Uh, I linked, uh, there's a link, uh, a few options. Uh, you can check um, if uh, to get, to get uh, more details. So slide 11 is an example of the customized workflow with the variables we just uh, discussed. Um, so here we specify the toolchain bike shed. Uh, the different source document here, foobar.bs. Um, uh, so I'm missing uh, the, the, the attribute is, is wrong here. It's W3C notification underscore CC. Um, but we are sending the results to echidna at example.org. 
uh, there's the working group decision and uh, we pass uh, over, um, over parameters for backshot to generate the snapshot. Uh, slide 12, uh, as I mentioned, I'm mainly focusing on, uh, on the automatic uh, updates of slash TR, but specprod can also help uh, publish to GitHub pages. So there are more examples uh, linked uh, from the repository again. Uh, slide 13, um, now how can you check the result of the request uh, because a request to Echidna doesn't, uh, doesn't necessarily mean uh, your document is going to be published on slash TR. So you can check the results in the actions tab uh, of your repository. That tab will list all the workflows that, are, that were executed and the, the results. Uh, here you have the PR push uh, workflow. And from here, you can get more details on the job status. So by clicking here on the build, validate, and deploy uh, job. Uh, so next slide. Um, so in the screenshot, you can see that specprod sends a request to Echidna via the curl command. So I don't know if it's uh, if if it's visible enough, but. Basically, what the action will do is to generate the curl command and will send the generated snapshot to, to, to Echidna. Uh, then specprod will check a few times if Echidna is done processing the request. Uh, if the request has been processed, it will return the final result. Here we have a success, um, which means the document was published on slash TR. But if uh, it's still pending, the workflow completes, and uh, you will have to look for the report uh, sent to public to the mailing list public tier notifications. Uh, and if you added your email address to the um, to the parameter uh, notifications, the W3C notifications CC, you will also get the, the report. Um, so the slide 15 gives uh, an overview of what's, what is done and uh, the different step of the automatic publication system. So, uh, so I mentioned, as I mentioned, the token creation can be done by the chair of uh, or the, the W3C team contact. Uh, if, there's, if it's a candidate recommendation snapshot, uh, uh, the request should be sent to the repository W3C transition. And uh, then there's the GitHub repository management, um, which is done by the chair, the staff contact, and, and the editors. So the spec, spec prod is part of the repository, is the action you are configuring in the repository, and that helps uh, generate the snapshot from respect and backshed, run the validations, which are optional, uh, and send the request to Echidna. In return, Echidna will validate the token, make sure the token used uh, is the right one, uh, make sure the document passes pub rules, uh, check the transition approval, uh, check the external resources, and if everything goes well, publish to slash tier. Uh, so that's the overview of the whole system. Okay, so we just discussed about the GitHub Action Spec Prod, uh, which, uh, so I mentioned uh, Spec Prod was built a few months ago. So before that, we had more complicated ways to use, uh, to send a request to Echidna. So I will, I will focus, I'm focusing more on SpecProd because it's the easiest way to get started with Echidna. But if you want to know more about the, the old ways to use Echidna, uh, you can check uh, the wiki, the wiki that is linked uh, here. 
Um, so if you have any problem uh, using Echidna or SpecProd or over just uh, you are having a hard time uh, setting your repo your repository with uh, to enable the automatic publishing system, you can try uh, the IRC channel HashPub, uh, or you can submit, uh, you can check the Echidna or SpecProd repositories, um, create issues, and uh, we will try to, to answer uh, as soon as possible. And also you can send uh, emails to WebRec at w3.org. Uh, so what's next? Um, so in the future, we are we want to check what uh, the limitations are and uh, how we can remove them. So uh, some of the limitations are, uh, are related to the old process documents, but with the new process document 2020, uh, there are things we can we can improve. Uh, and uh, we will also look at uh, how we can um, facilitate uh, the recommendation uh, revi revision uh, per the pro per process uh, document twenty per process process document twenty twenty. Um, and if uh, we make uh, we if we add new features or we make major changes to Echidna, we will announce uh, it uh, to SpecProd before deploying. So I'm done with the talk. If you have any questions, uh, now is the moment. <laughs>